exponents. We're going to get started with section 4.1, which have to do with factors and prime factorizations. All right, let's consider the number 20. The number 20 can be thought of as 1 times 20. It can be thought of as 2 times 10. It can be thought of as 4 times 5. Those are considered pairs of factors. Factors are what you multiply together. In this case, these factors multiply together and give us 20. So if I said, what are all the factors of 20? That would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Of course, 1 is always a factor because 1 divides into any kind of a whole number. And the number itself is a factor because you know it divides into itself one time. So in this first one, it said write off factors of 33. So for A, Factors of 33 would be 1. Now, 33 is divisible by 3 because it's 3 times 11. And 33, I don't think you can find any other whole number factors of 33. Now, for 43, for answer for problem B here, 43, the only two numbers I can think of that divide into 43 are 1 and 43 itself. The last one, 55, it's a little bit like the 33 one. It has 1. And 11 divides into it, because you all remember your uh, multiples of 11. So 5 and 11, because 5 times 11 is 55, and 55 itself. So if you're listing factors, don't forget to list the numbers 1 and the number itself. Now, a prime number is a whole number that is, look at the definition here, is a whole number greater than 1 and has exactly two whole number factors, 1 in itself. So if I look back at the examples I just did, this would be an example of a prime number because the only two factors 43 has are 1 and the number itself. There are lots of prime numbers. The smallest prime number and the only even prime number is 2. 3 is prime, 5, 7. Now we skip 9 because it looks like I'm doing odds because nine and 3 divides into 9, but 11 and 13 and 17 and 19 and, well, that list goes on and on and on. Now, a composite number is kind of a, the prime number's uh, uh, counterexample, if you want to think of it that way. It's the ones that aren't prime are composite. It's a whole number greater than 1 and has more than two whole number factors. So the numbers 33 and 55 are both composite numbers because besides 1 and 33 or 1 and 55, we know 11 divides into both of those. So even if you have just one more factor, then it's considered a composite number. One is kind of its own individual. It's neither prime nor composite. It's kind of like Switzerland. All right, in this case, it says tell whether the number is prime or composite. Well, unless you're talking about the number 2, any other even number means it's divisible by 2. So I'm just going to put the letter C here for now to represent composite because I didn't leave myself much space. So any number greater than 2 that's divisible by 2, that's an even number, you know it's composite. So here's another one. This one's composite. But 59, 59, I think of numbers that try to divide into 59 like 3 or 5 or 7 or some of those types of numbers. And the only number I can think of that divides into 59 bigger than 1 is 59. So this would be a prime number. I'm going to put a capital P for prime there. 83, same thing. It's one of those numbers you try to find different factors. You try 7 or 11 or, or 3. None of those numbers will divide evenly. So this one also is a prime number. Now, the only way you can really tell is to investigate it by trying to find what factors work you start with 2, work your way on up, and see which of those numbers, if any, will divide into 83. If you find one that divides into 83 evenly, you know, then you know it's not prime, it's composite. But the only ones that divide in 83 are 1 in 83 itself. Same thing here with 101, my next one. 101 is only divisible by itself and 1. So for the third one in a row, this one is prime. Now, 175 might look prime because it's odd, but you know that any number that ends with a 5 is going to be divisible by 5, so there's other numbers that divide into this, so this one is composite. Okay, let's go back to the number that we started with, the number 20. I wrote down different ways that 20 could be written in, in terms of factors. I had 1 times 20 and 2 times 10 and 4 times 5, but one more way I could write it would be 2 times 2 times 5, because 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 5 is 20. The reason that this one is special is that all three of the factors here are prime numbers. This is called 
a prime factorization. A prime factorization is when you write a number, like 20, as a product of its prime factors. And one way to help us with that would be a factor tree. You may remember this from uh, previous math classes. A factor tree will help to break it down in its primes. For example, 35. If I take the number 35, the two numbers I think of of 35 are not 1 and 35, but 5 and 7. So this would be 5 times 7. And the reason that I don't go any further than here is both 5 and 7 are prime numbers, so there's my prime factorization. Now 59, that was one of the numbers we looked at before. This number is prime, so it does not have a prime factorization. That's it, it's just a prime number. Now 32, 32 can be thought of as, and there's a couple of different ways you can think of 32, but I'm thinking of 4 times 8. 4 is 2 times 2, 8 is 2 times 4. That's prime, that's prime, that's prime, but this one is composite, that's two times two. I have one, two, three, four, five factors of two. Two times two times two times two times two, or two to the fifth power, because there are five factors of two. Now 175, I know this is composite, it'll have a prime factorization, because I know five goes to that. Five times, let's see, it looks like 30, 35. And we just did 35. 35 was 5 times 7. So you can see the prime factors here. This is 5 times 5 times 7, or 5 to the second power times 7. That's its prime factorization. That comes in handy, finding least common denominators and greatest common multiples and such to be able to write prime factorizations. Now let's skip on down to the algebra part here. The algebra where we bring in the variable. A monomial is a number a variable or the product of a number and one or more variables raised the whole number of powers. That's a lot to, to kind of get all at one time. But all of these examples up here, these are all considered just numbers, so they're considered technically monomials. But if you throw in a variable or the product of variables, then you can have also things that are considered monomials. We were calling them terms before. This is an example of a monomial because it's a product of a variable and a number. This is an example of a monomial because it's the product of a number and one or more variables, and the variables are raised to whole number powers. Same thing here on this third example. This is a, considered a monomial. This 15 is its coefficient, that's a whole number, and the product of three factors of x and four factors of y, that's a monomial. It's the product of a number and one or more variables. Now this one is not. That's why I put the little c in front of example. This is a counterexample. This is not considered a monomial because it has a sum of a number and a variable. You can't have that. And this is not considered one because you can't divide by the variable. You can divide into the variable but you can't uh, by a number, but you can't divide anything by a variable and have it as a monomial. So I have three examples down here of monomials, and it says factor. Well, the first part of the factor we do just like we did the prime factorization. In fact, I, I picked 35 here on purpose. We know 35 is 5 times 7. So down here, this is 5 times 7, and then you have one factor of x, and you have two factors of y. So that's considered how you factor it down. Here we know that 15 is 3 times 5. You have three factors of n, so times n, times n, times n. 16, 16 is 4 times 4, which is 2 times 2, and 2 times 2, 2, 3, 4 factors. So 16 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now I have two factors of A, and I have one factor of B. You can get good at this, but it does take a lot of uh, hard work, and of course, always practice, practice, practice.